We work with about 80 NGOs who work across the country providing humanitarian development assistance to the Somali people. I represent 330 NGOs employing 24,500 people. This FORA is an informal platform of 25 uh, NGO members and representing 50 uh, local and national NGOs. The NGO platform consists of uh, approximately 100 NGOs and they are uh, local, national and international NGOs. In the four countries, Chad, Nigeria, Cameroon and Niger, we come up together and we say, okay, why can't we have a regional forum where all the four countries we can come together? Bringing the perspective of one context, bringing the perspectives of a group of NGOs is very powerful. Working in a fora for us presents a number of unique opportunities. It gives us a unique opportunity to work collectively in a cost-benefit analysis type of way, in a way where we are sharing uh, not only costs but also sharing lessons. Having common position on some key advocacy priorities is for me a success story because it really shows the complementarity between international, national and local NGOs. So for instance, prior to the Brussels 2 conference, together with the INGO Forum, we've been able to issue a common advocacy statement and we've been able to secure quite a high number of seats for Lebanese local and national NGOs to speak at the conference and to convey those messages. It's actually essential for NGOs to come together in consortia because together we have a stronger voice uh, in many countries. Uh, we reach both civil societies, governments and donors all over the world. When we prepare joint statements or press releases in Bangladesh for Rohingya response, we usually get between 40 and 50 NGOs uh, endorse the statement. Through that, our message is passed more widely. The discussions that the NGO Forum had with the Ministry of Labour was around national recruitment of staffing into NGOs and not recruiting staff based on ethnic identities because we see an objective process of recruiting staff as important for nation building. So the ministry has now asked NGO Forum to nominate representatives to work with them. I think that's a great progress actually. Because of the impact we are making, we have become a critical stakeholders that represent the affected population in most of the fora across the world, especially the famous Oslo Humanitarian Conference organized by UN and donors, where about 675 million was realized to provide support to the lecture region. In 2011, we had a famine. 260,000 people died. Uh, half of them were children who perished. We promised ourselves and to the people that we work with never again. We're never going to have those famines happen on our watch. We're never going to be a witness to it. If anything, in 2016 and 2017, we had some of the similar seasonality data. We had similar triggers and, and early warnings, and we chose to act on those together as a coordinated body, providing our NGOs with information that is critical for their movement and for their work, and that's been what made the difference. Joining hands is crucial. It makes a huge difference when we say we're negotiating here on behalf of so many organizations, so much volume of assistance to go in on the ground. It's very important to come together with what's our common vision. Ensuring that the voices of the NGOs reflect and amplifies the voices of the affected communities. They don't necessarily compete with each other and they try to strengthen the efficiency of the collective work. And this is why the European Commission Humanitarian Aid Department wants to support the NGO Forum. It's so powerful when you have a large community of NGOs focused on the same thing, putting pressure on the same thing, at global level, at regional level, at national level, at community level.